Hello. Hi, I'm Whitney Coburn, love coach and owner of Heart Hunters Love Coaching, and welcome to my program. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you one of the books that I recommend for all the clients that I see in my program. It's an amazing book. It's called Powerful and Feminine by Rachel Jane Groover, How to Increase Your Magnetic Presence and Attract the Attention You Want. And you can see how much I love this book because of all the places that I have uh, noted to go back to. And I do go back to this book quite a bit. So I'm going to just go through and share some of my favorite highlights and share with you a little bit about my experience with this book, as well as one of my clients' experience with this book. So if you are a single woman, or if you're in a relationship with a man that is unfulfilling, a lot of times we don't know what the root of the problem is. So you might think that the problem is that he is shut down or he can't communicate or whatever it is that we think our problems are, usually there's something under the surface. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So stay tuned, watch this, and I would love to hear your thoughts, your comments, let me know what you think. Okay, so the first thing about pow powerful and feminine is it fights the stereotype, the notion that femininity is weakness. When we watch these horror movies, for example, there's always the, the hot girl in the beginning that's the first one to die. And we just think, oh, the feminine one that screams and can't handle anything, but it's, it's Hollywood. And what we're missing is that there is a masculine and feminine uh, spectrum. And this is where polarity comes from. And it means that the masculine side is very powerful and we're very familiar with masculine power, but the feminine side is very powerful as well. We are the creators of life. We are radiant. We bring emotional happiness and joy into the world. There's just so much when a woman feels at peace with herself, with her essence, then she has a whole different vibe. And we are able to magnetize exactly what we want and not just a man, but magnetize the job we want, the type of work we want, the type of clients we want, whatever it is that we want in our lives, being true to our inner core and feminine essence will help us to do that. So there's this feminine awakening happening in the wake of feminism because feminism is awesome. I'm a feminist. I bet you are too. A feminist is just a person that wants equal rights for men and women. So I think we can pretty much all agree that we are feminists and support that movement. But the feminist movement has also gone so far in the opposite direction that we almost insist that females are, are like men and do whatever men do. And, and we push our daughters to be like the boys and, and there's all these ads strong enough for, you know, that old one strong enough for a man, but made for a woman and out strong enough for a woman. And I'm all about empowerment. Yes, we wanna be empowered, but we also wanna be empowered authentically. And if you are a feminine creature, there's no reason to hide that. In fact, we should be, singing it from the rafters and really letting our radiance shine. So one of the first things that we often have to do to uh, begin this journey is to recognize what our limiting beliefs are around femininity. Were you told at some younger age that nice girls don't do this or that? Or what kind of limiting beliefs might you have about femininity, that it's weak, that it's not appropriate, that it's asking for unwanted attention. You know, there's so many. And this is something that I do in my program uh, with women to uncover their limiting beliefs and then reframe them, not only about femininity, but about many other things as well. So we wanna get past that idea that you have to be a certain way to be feminine. Every woman has their own flavor of femininity. So 
for example, one woman might want to wear leather pants and a black bustier, and that's her way that she feels super feminine. And then someone else might feel super feminine in a floral long sleeve shirt that's flowery. But we don't have to put a square peg in a round hole. We don't have to adhere to what anybody else says is feminine. Because when we really drop into our body, our essence, our spirit, we find our own version. And so another thing in this book that I just love is they talk about having a balance of warmth and mystery. And this answers so many questions that women have about, should I play hard to get? Should I be, you know, how nice, how appeasing, how much should I go with the flow? And it really is about having a balance of warmth and mystery. So you don't want to meet someone right up front and tell them everything about you. Oh, you should know that I'm this and I had this and I had this disease and I this and you don't spill all your beans right up front. You want to be vulnerable and honest and open but you wanna leave a little bit of mystery because if you're just way too forthcoming, it can be a little awkward. It can put people off. And on the same token, if you're all mystery and every time someone asks you a question, you go, hmm, wouldn't you like to know? But you don't actually tell them anything about you. That is frustrating and it will lose interest. But if you find this perfect balance, that feels right and natural, that allows you to be vulnerable and open up and share with, with people. And this is, you know, I am a love coach and I help women to find love and love themselves and keep lasting love. So I'm sort of focusing on that, but this applies even outside of your love life. A little warmth and mystery. If you're in a job interview, for example, you can have warmth. And it's not a sexual warmth. It's just a friendly warmth. But also a little mystery where you're not telling them, oh, and I was late to my job five times. You know, there's certain things that you don't say, and that's okay. You're allowed to keep a few things, you know, close to, cards close to your chest. All right. Another important thing that I loved from this book. And let me just turn to that page here. All right. So this is about our longing to be loved. There's this great quote here. All right. It doesn't take much to notice that women's hearts are collectively aching, aching for love, for attention, for appreciation, for physical touch, and for a safe place to rest and let go. And yet true freedom and power, as we will explain now, come not from pushing away our longing for love, but from experiencing it. Wow. So I know so many women that are, they say, well, you know, I'm, I had a bad relationship and I'm just working on myself and I just need to be alone right now. And they're so, it's, it's such a challenge that they're doing to push away that desire, to refrain, to hold back. And I agree, sometimes that is necessary and really helpful because we do have inner work that needs to be done. But I know in my program, we do that inner work in about two months and then we can say, okay, now you're ready to <laughs> move on and, and see what's out there and, and begin to start to share your heart with other people. Because that's the thing is we get afraid. We're led by fear. We have limiting beliefs. We're afraid of being seen, being hurt, being left, whatever it is that we have experienced in our past or have seen someone else experience or have learned throughout our life, we become afraid of. But the real key is to recognize that you have a longing for these things, to be loved, to have attention, to be appreciated, to be touched. I know some people over pandemic spent months or even years not being touched by another human, and it really takes a toll. That loneliness can cause all kinds of feelings and even mental health problems. So we do need this, and it's okay. It's okay to be needy. Whoever 
whoever needs to hear this right now, it's okay to have needs. You are human and you have needs. Just like you need air and food and water, we have this longing and this deep need to be loved and appreciated. So when we can actually own it and feel it and experience it and not push it away, it's very powerful, very powerful and also a very powerful key to being able to manifest your ideal relationship. Another thing that I will share with you um, from this book that I love is it lays out three stages of that women go through when seeking love. And the first one is, I need to get love from someone else. So this is where most people start is <clears throat> wanting love. I mean, this is how we are as children. When we're born, we just, we want and need the love of our parents. We're not able to really generate it from ourselves and, and be content without it. We need it. And then the second phase that we go through, so usually people begin sort of, they sort of get fed up with that because they chase it and it doesn't work out and they get frustrated. And so the second stage is I don't need anyone else because I give up, I give myself the love I need. So if we get together, let's have a completely equal relationship. So this is, again, that person that's working on herself, that's going through personal growth. She's strong, independent, self-sufficient, and they often have developed their masculine side pretty strongly. So they're usually successful at what they do. They get things done. They're working. They might be parenting and able to say no. You know, that's a big step to get to is when you're able to have strong boundaries and say no. And this feels like a better place to be than needing love from someone else. Finally, you realize, oh my gosh, I don't need someone else. I don't need them. And that is a step in the right direction because it's true, you don't need to have someone to have love. And there's all these messages in, in our social media and marketing that are single and loving it, you know, and, and I know I follow some Tinder blog and funny meme, Instagram channels and they all are, are flaunting the benefits of being single. And yes, being single is 100% better than being in a bad relationship. There's no, <laughs> no point in being in a bad relationship just to have someone. Mm -mm. Um, but, you know, this being by yourself and not feeling like you don't need love, eventually you feel like there must be more to this. You know, I have better self-esteem, I'm able to get things done, but where's the passion? Where's the magic? Where's that wild love that deep down I really, really want? So what's the third step? The third step is I don't need to keep giving love to myself. I am love. That's the key to become love. You don't need to find it from someone else. You don't need to give it to yourself. You are love. And this happens when we have a shift, a, a mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, energetic shift, where finally we feel at peace with ourselves. We feel our vibration is at a higher level. And it's like we become an endless fountain of love. And I do a visualization exercise with my clients that I love where we visualize ourselves as a fountain of love. And it's in the middle of a meditation. So we're deeply connected with our intuition and our mind's eye. And we discuss, I ask them to figure out what's the color, what's the texture, what does it feel like? What does it look like? And I get all kinds of awesome responses, you know, blue and sparkly, pink like cotton candy. Um, everybody has their own kind of interpretation of what this love feels like. But this is the key to really learning how to be in a happy, healthy, loving relationship or even to be happy and loving and amazing on your own, which you absolutely can be. But when you're in the first or the second phase, you feel incomplete. 
you you just feel like you're not getting what you need. And you know, it all starts with our self-love because in order to consistently be overflowing with love, we have to love ourselves. And that's where it all starts. It all starts with the relationship with yourself. I hope so that was helpful for you. Watch my Heart Hunters Love Coaching program live every week on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Eastern on the Phoenix National Network or on my website, www.whitneylovecoach.com. My guests and I will be talking about all sorts of juicy topics about love and relationships, self-love, communication, and more. So go ahead and put a reminder on your phone to watch every Tuesday at 11 a.m. So what do you think? Does any of this resonate with you? If you're struggling with love, I invite you to apply for a love life strategy session with me. It's so easy. Just call or text me at the number you see on the screen or visit my website, WhitneyLoveCoach.com because everyone, including you, deserves to love yourself, love your life, and have lasting love. I am Whitney Coverin, and I am a love coach. So when people are thinking about spending money on getting help, having somebody to guide them and support them, oftentimes they're hesitant about spending that money. They want to know exactly what am I going to get out of this? Someone that's going to bring out the best in them, encourage and support and love them.